can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. First off, let me start off by saying I actually, like, genuinely do not know anything about politics. I simply came in here to, like, I I've been in a few other streams. I was just riling people up. You know, the Minecraft servers down with my friends, I was just bored. Okay, well, that clears my voice check, actually, just because I need to volume check you so I could level you. Oh, uh, bad, I was just going to have you count to five, but that weird screed can work. Um, so... What, um, what does, um, what does that do for your, um, sort of entertainment and ego then? Like if it, that's, mm. that's your, that's your form of entertainment. It's just like in my mind, the average people that care this much about politics, honestly, kind of get riled up easily. And like, that's just all I'm here for. Do you, can you comprehend at your age? why they might get rid of it? You know, honestly, probably not. Uh, maybe, but probably not, honestly. Probably not. Cool. So, <sighs> do, you, um, do you know that um, an economic policy that we passed in the early 90s um, started in the 80s, passed in the 90s, called NAFTA. You may have heard this term before. No, I'm not aware of it. It's called North American Free Trade Agreement. Basically, this was an agreement that opened up the borders between Mexico and the U.S. for increased trade, increased globalization, these sorts of things. The net result of that, uh, that agreement caused an influx of ultra-processed foods and unchecked corporate uh, lobbying within the Mexican governance at the time. And within a decade, we can track this, the, the net result is quite literally skyrocketing food-related illnesses, heart disease, diabetes, pancreatitis, these sorts of things that quite literally kill tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands over the course of a period. So one economic policy instituted by one administration across a congressional platform can destroy an entire nation's health. I see. So it's sort of like that, but even on a bigger scale, because when we talk about something like women's rights, what we're, do what we're talking about then at that point is a bodily autonomy, and what we're talking about there is the fact that since we since we undermined Roe v. Wade at the Supreme Court level and kicked it back to the states, there's already an approximated 220,000 babies born in this country as a direct result of sexual assault and rapes. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, a quarter of a million rape babies just since mm -hmm. we did yeah, that, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so if any of this impacts you, right, if you've got a family member who has type 2 diabetes, if you have a family member or sister who was raped and the police did nothing because we have over a million rape kits backed up in this country, police reform and bodily autonomy for women and access to, uh, access to reproductive health care, all of these sorts of things might actually be like super touchy topics that could get to somebody pretty effectively but right, yeah. rightfully so, because you're talking about somebody's sister being raped. You're talking about somebody's mom dying because Coca-Cola is a predatory company, right? You're, you're talking about Mexico City not having water because Coke and Nestle are, are absolutely just ravaging the water table there. Okay. Right. And so... Yeah, it's it's I, I understand. I was I was young once. It's a long time ago, but I was young once and I get riling people up for fun. I still do mm -hmm. it from time to time. I get it. Mm -hmm. But that does actually have a real world equivalency that equals that is measured in death. Right, yeah, I see where you're getting at here. And I see how you you know not the best place to do it probably. And I mean, Trump's Trump's policies regarding tariffs alone caused an increased rate of farmer suicides in this country. Hmm. 
So when you talk about like, oh, hey, Trump's going to fix the economy because fucking tax breaks and tariffs, it's like, okay, well, he actually caused a whole bunch of farmers to kill themselves <laughs> because they're, uh, they live on a razor thin margin as it is. And the increased tariffs, tariffs are paid by the consumer, the receiving consumer, not the, uh, not the country on the other side. China doesn't pay tariffs. You pay tariffs for Chinese goods. So when China didn't want to deal with the tariff, uh, uh, the trade and tariff system at some degree, and they turned to Brazil instead as a replacement for corn and soybeans, largely corn and soy farmers in the middle of the country were left with field full fields full of rotting goods. And they're on a razor thin margin as it is. And they already have higher increased rates of depression and su uh, suicidal tendencies as uh, uh, compared to the general population. So a bunch of them did end up bankrupt, did end up taking their lives as a direct result of that policy. Okay. Now, if I could stop you there real quick, um, a few things. One, from uh, I guess from what I've seen from the media, it just seems like Trump, yeah, he has said a lot of bad things, uh, maybe done a lot, a lot of bad things, but he's also done good things for the country. Maybe not for, like, the people, but for the country, I guess. Such and as. Kamala, uh, I, I'm not too exactly sure. I'm mostly, I'm hearing just, like, about the economy, but I, I don't know in detail what exactly he's doing. I don't know if he's actually doing anything at all. And then Kamala, uh, from what I've heard, has, like, just... I've only really heard bad things. I haven't, like, heard from, good things. Not saying that from, she doesn't you, do good things. You it's say just I haven't heard You about say it. media. Right, right, it's a, exactly. It's a, it's a big thing. Where are you hearing these things? Um, like, TikTok, Instagram. I have uh, this one news app, but I don't think it's that reliable. It's kind of like local news. Okay, so TikTok. So the algorithm is feeding you that. So you're partway down the rabbit hole, as we would see, uh, see it. Mm -hmm. um, so let's start with the economy. All right. Wait, and real quick, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I just wanted to say that, uh, like, before you go on about this, how, like, where do you get these facts? Like, how, what are your credentials? You know, what makes you, you know, have a say in this, I guess? Not, like, disrespecting you. I'd imagine you do. I just don't a, know you. A you know? lifetime of experience um, starting with being a, an Occupy organizer at age 20. Um, I'm 41 now. 41. Mm -hmm. um, a... a Several decades of experience working within political spaces. Um, oh. So at this point, it just is what it is. Plus, I have a hive mind behind me or to my, to my side right here <laughs> that can actively fact check and source just about any document given who's here. Um, so we have, yeah, we have some people in chat right now that have various degrees. I see a lawyer just popped up. We have, oh, okay. um, so yeah, like it is what it is. Um, mm -hmm. I see, I see now. Yes. Uh, we've got some policy, uh, public administration, poli sci people. We've Jeez. got, you know, that sort of thing. So between myself and, and I'm autistic. And that, <laughs> that um, guy's just there, you know? Um, yeah. Um, yeah, philosophy, comp, sci, PhD, uh, computer, sci, PhD, two IT degrees. Yeah, like we've, it's just, it's a well-credentialed space. Let's just put it I that see, way. yes, I see that now. Okay. That's crazy. So if, if I am lacking for information, I will just kick it to the, uh, to the hive mind and very quickly something will be provided somewhere on the server or in chat. Um, heard, heard. So let's start with... Let's start with Trump's benefit to the economy, right? Okay. There are two economies. Mm -hmm. Let's let's simplify this down, right? Um, yeah, you. and a farmer who happens to have what engineering degree? Yeah, exactly, Aspen. <laughs> um, I'm just a farmer. Yeah, sure. Um, so there's two economies. There's Main Street and Wall Street. Mm -hmm. Right, you may have come across this concept at at a at a young age. Not really, but I can understand it. Kind of go on. Okay, so yeah, a farmer that's worked on a nuclear reactor before—that is actually true. Um, so 
there are two metrics by which you can measure the function of the economy of this country very readily. One is the performance of large corporations and stock index, uh, indices, right? Mm-hmm. So you see, you hear like Dow Jones and the S&P 500 and things like this. These are stock indexes, okay. right? Then there's the other metric, how the common person is doing, mm-hmm. right? And these can be measured a variety of ways. You can start looking at some statistics having to do with unemployment, payment rates, cost of living indexes, indices, stuff like this. You can, you can glean an idea of this uh, via a variety of manners. Mm-hmm. And when you compare the two, what you do see is that tr- Trump slash conservative slash GOP can uh, generally are good for that upper 1%. And when you want to measure the U.S. economy based on how Intel and Google and Apple and f- various biotech, pharmaceutical and military industrial complex contractors are doing – then you can say that, yeah, he's not terrible for the economy. Mm -hmm. But if you measure it by whether your groceries have gone up by 45% in a couple of years, if you measure it by how much your rent is, if you measure it by your general cost of living versus the rate of, uh, of compensation for wage, then what you find very quickly is that Trump and the Republicans are generally policy based for the very richest amongst us. And you can demonstrate that with the tax cuts that were shoved, shoved through during the Trump administration. While they gave tax cuts to upper middle class and middle class, those tax cuts were largely benefited to the 1%. And those tax cuts were designed to stagger and increase at a seven or eight year, somebody can check me on that, a seven or eight year uh, delay. So basically what they did was transfer a bunch of wealth to the 1% in the form of uh, deregulation and regulatory tax cuts and mask it as a tax cut for the middle class, when in fact, after seven or eight years, the rates of taxing for that middle class are, uh, are statutorily designed to go above what they were before, while the, one, uh, the upper 1% of the tax bracket retains their tax cuts. See. So it's- And the before, sorry, the before is like pretty before Trump took over, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, and I, I mean, there's a, there's a long history here of- um, Republicans in the modern era basically being very, very good at saying one thing and doing another. Mm-hmm. Um, Bill Clinton's administration, Democrat, was um, the only administration in the modern era that um, eight-year sunset date. Thank you, Marcus. 2017 tax cuts come in, 2025 designed to s- spike. Um, so just enough to cover his, his, his presidency, if it were eight years, think about how it's designed, right? It's, it's designed that way to just, just give the appearance of I'm helping you. The -hmm. Clinton administration actually balanced the U S budget that happened during the Clinton administration. We, we were not spending more than we were making as a nation at at a federal level. Like they successfully balanced the U S budget. And then the Bush junior uh, administration came in and we were $2 trillion in the hole. Hmm. I mean, imagine spending $2 trillion in deficit, right? Like that's, that's, that's difficult to do. (laughs) Yeah. It's honestly difficult. Yeah. You're right. So, there's been a pattern of this over the course of modernity in America to a huge extent. Um, now, in no way, shape, or form, think I'm carrying water for the Democrats here. The Democrats are absolutely a part of a duplicitous bi-party sy- a two-party system that is functionally just two heads of the same beast. But they are different in some substantive ways that matter to the, the public, 
the Democrats for sure are in bed with a whole bunch of large businesses because large business and corporations are a cancer upon the world at this point. Um, they are running completely unchecked. And the Democrats will sort of like, I, I usually explain it this way. There's two people in the room with you. One of them is trying to pick your pocket and the other one is threatening to stab you. Mm-hmm. Which one do you deal with first? The guy that's going to pick your pocket. Really? Her, wait, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I thought of that question wrong. The guy with the knife. The guy with the knife. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, if you happen to be a woman, if you happen to be queer, if you happen to be poor, if you happen to be an immigrant, if you happen to be brown of any a variety of shades – uh, of race, then the Republicans are a very bad option at this point, given that they are functionally in bed. If it were just the, like what we used to, uh, like the uh, fiscal neocons, the neoconservatives, if we were just dealing with the the douchebag money guys, this conversation might be a lot different. But under mm-hmm. the Reagan administration, the Republicans got in bed with the religious right in this country. And they made a deal with the devil, basically. And ever since then, it has gotten weirder and weirder and weirder with the Republicans because they have to appease this base that keeps them supported because the Republicans are a minority party in this country. If Mm -hmm. we, if we had a straight up and down vote just a straight Democratic vote, no electoral college, right? Yeah. The Republicans would never win another election again. Right, yeah. They are a minority party. hmm But they are supported by ger- gerrymandering. They rig the electoral maps. They have the electoral college. They use the court system to their advantage. See Bush v. Gore. The Bush-Gore election was decided by the Supreme Court, who had justices appointed by Bush's father on it, and generally they appeal, uh, they appeal to and appease a base of fundamentalist Christian conservatives in this country that will absolutely vote along party lines, whereas the Democrats will be more fractured based on a variety of policies. And so the more, the longer that this playbook goes, the weirder it gets. And you see that under the Trump administration where he's now saying that there's good people on both sides when one side is literal Nazis. Mm, Like, uh, yeah, okay. That's, that's a problem when you're, when you're afraid to just be like, Hey guys, they're chanting. They will not replace us about Jews in the streets carrying sources of fire and running people over who point out that they're fascists. Like that's, that's probably when you're afraid to call that shit out, like, mm-hmm. yeah, maybe, maybe it's time to like reevaluate who your allies are. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we can point to multiple instances where this right wing conservative um, socially conservative. It's one thing for the fiscal conservatives. Uh, that's another conversation. But this social conservative element that is attached to the GOP is super problematic for a large group of people in this country. Mm-hmm. And not just like, oh, wow, it might. No, they, they, they will kill us. They will. Mm-hmm. Um. I am a gay man who lived through the tail end of the AIDS crisis in, the, in this country. The, the Christian conservatives, the, you know, the people who say, Jesus, love your neighbor guys, right, mm-hmm. had full page ads in, uh, in major newspapers in this country talking about how this is God's cure for homosexuality. And back then, the same crew that didn't want to, you know, didn't want to wear a mask for COVID were happy to wear masks because they didn't want to catch the gay disease, right? They're, they're very, they're very happy to allow us to die. Um, And I can easily put a video on stream right now of a Texas pastor recently, like this is not old, recently talking about how 
homosexuals should be lined up, given a trial under a Christian court in, in the new uh, in the new era of this country, and summarily executed by being shot in the back of the head. Wow. I. I can I can put up a plan, an action plan that was written by a former Republican representative of Oregon, I want to say. Um, no, Washington, Washington, mm-hmm. where he outlines the rules and procedures for engaging in a um, a religious civil war. And talking about how if atheists and homosexuals not, will not renounce their uh, their lifestyles, then they should be summarily executed, and their um, their belo- their personal property and belongings should be redistributed amongst the cause. Anybody who any woman who does not uh, bow to this new patriarchal system should be considered an enemy and should be forced to. You can imagine what that would entail. This is a Republican mm-hmm. elected a re- Republican representative of the time who's outlining ac- outlining actual steps to conducting a religious genocide in this country. Right? You can you oh, can yeah. say that like two, both of these sides are are problematic and they are for a variety of reasons. The Democrats mm-hmm. are in bed with fucking so many corporations and they are perfectly happy to stand there while the Republicans genocide you. They won't mm-hmm. stop you. They won't stop it. Mm-hmm. They'll, they'll, they'll talk about how it's horrible. But they're not going to fucking put any skin in the game. But the Republicans are the ones who are going to be doing it. Mm-hmm. And so I'd rather address that topic first, and then I'll get around to those traitorous fucks on the other side. But yeah. it, it is very much a harm reduction issue for for a lot of us at this point and it's like look another trump administration means furthering literal christo fascist white supremacist ideals in this country Mm -hmm. these fuckers are real they're not going anywhere they're doing insane shit They've got we we can't even tell you it's somewhere between one and two million homes students that are being homeschooled by these weirdo nut jobs. They have no interaction with the public school system, and they're just trying to build an army of Christian soldiers for when the end times come and Jesus says, swing the sword against the, the devil people. Like that's, that's a real thing that's happening in this country. And so, yeah, I don't value on that either. So we, it's so for a lot of people, while I can appreciate doing something for the lulls, it is a very real life or death situation, whether it's from bad policy that will further enable Things like right to work, which is which undermines worker uh, worker protections and makes it harder to make gainful employment and allows for landlords to conspire to jack up rent within an area. Right. Just making it just increasing homeless uh, homelessness rates right across Mm -hmm. the board, which I mean, way that seems fun or all the way to. Allowing for, or at least tacitly, uh, or at least implicitly allowing for Christo fascists to engage in psychotic fucking domestic terrorist behavior. Because my entire life has been a story of right wing domestic terrorism in this country. They, they, they shoot up doctors in the, the rectory of their own churches. This is, this is not, these are well-documented instances. If a doctor, an OBGYN dares conduct an abortion, this has happened. Except bombings of all sorts, just doctor's offices to children, like the threats of children's hospitals being bombed, all the way up to large government facilities with daycares on the, uh, with a daycare on the bottom floor, just blown the fuck up by a dude who was convinced that, that, N words were were in, were uh, taking over this country, and that the race wars time was here, right? Like this is just regular shit that they shoot up gay clubs, that they do this, that, and the other. Mm-hmm. When when the left wing comes out and does some shit, 
they do, they damage property. And there's actually a lot of instances in which I mean, we can point to like the ski resort in, um, in Aspen, Colorado, purposefully done at night, purposefully warned ahead of time that like everybody fucking get the fuck out. Like the left wing, when they engage in these sorts of acts, will make concerted efforts to not hurt people and will damage property, capital. Whereas the mm-hmm. right wing targets people. That's, that's who they target. And this isn't just me speaking on this. This is the FBI speaking on this, who's not exactly a fan of anarchists, which is what I am. So when the anarchists and the FBI are both telling you the same thing, yeah, yeah, these fuckers are a problem. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, no, yeah, so, no comment on that. Yeah, so it, it, at this point... For a lot of people, including those 220,000 approximated girls and women who have been raped and been denied access to abortions since a Trump-stacked Supreme Court undermined Roe v. Wade, right? Since, Since that sort of thing, like, you're a dude. Right. Like, I know it's difficult to wrap your head around, but imagine at age 15, your dad raping you and you being forced to carry the baby to term because you're not allowed to have access to reproductive health care because your state said no and you have to get parental permission. How would that that, true? How would that fuck you up for life? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. I forgot. I remember I heard about um, that going through somewhere in some state and I kind of like forgot about it, honestly. Yeah, it's may I ask where in the country you are? Uh, Pennsylvania. Okay, so hey, Marcus, um, like you're in a place, I mean, rural PA gets a little weird. It gets a little weird. Um, But if you're in any of the major metro areas, you're, you're at least somewhat insulated. So you don't have the worst case scenario on your doorstep, Mm -hmm. but this is a guy, as far as Trump goes, this is a guy that will like, you know what deregulation actually does? Like when, uh, when Republicans talk about we need deregulation to stimulate the economy and get us back to work, you know what they're talking about? Are they talking about like the actual economy, like the money, or are they talking about something else? What they're talking about is worker protections. They're talking, oh. they're talking about rules and, uh, rules and governance controls that prevent businesses and business owners and the ownership class of this country from engaging in fucked up shit, such as the 80s Reagan era of deregulation that really started, really kick-started a lot of this, right? You know how all that manufacturing went to China? Yeah. Hmm deregulation they were allowed to fire all of their workers liquidate their assets under the cover of private equity and move their their facilities to some place that would never meet regulatory guidelines otherwise you can just stop that All this, like, uh, so many things here are, like, I'm learning about a lot of different things. Like, it's a lot to process, you know what I mean? That's, that's, you can, you can just stop that. Like, that's, you can absolutely do that. You can just put rules in place that say uh, that, for example, if you're going to shut down a manufacturing facility, um, that there is to be no equivalency done elsewhere. Otherwise, you will incur a hundred percent fine and tariff on any of the goods that will be brought in. Otherwise, so if you are making lawn mowers uh, in in Indiana, you and you had a hundred and fifty U.S. employees gainfully employed here, 
and you get it in your head that you can fire those 150 employees, shut down the manufacturing facility, transfer it to China, and hire 75 kids to do the work and then just import your lawnmowers back and sell them at the same price, but having uh, undercut the cost by 85%, we can then ensure that the cost of those, uh, those lawnmowers is going to go up for you. Mm-hmm, absolutely. So we can pr- then make it an economic decision for you. It's like, oh, well, I could leave it here or I can try and do this, but it's actually going to cost us 125%. So it no longer is a viable economic decision. That's what, that's what regulatory intervention in, uh, in that space does. It, it allows for protections of, hey, if you get caught hire, uh, having a 13-year-old work on your meat processing plant fl- of floor, the fine for each instance of that occurring is six months worth of profit. How many 13-year-olds do you think we're going to find on that meat processing floor? I'm scared to say a lot, honestly. Well, our current fine rate is something in the neighborhood of a couple of grand and we'll even waive the fine. So under our current structures, a lot. But if I find you half a year's worth of your profit, you'd you'd say, okay, so I make... $200 $200 million in half a year using our meat packing plants. I'm pretty sure just hiring a few extra workers who aren't 13 years of age is less than that $200 million. Mm-hmm. So you just make the economic decision to not fuck around and find out. But if you can deregulate, if you can disempower, if you can do what's called regulatory capture, where corporations essentially put people who are friendly to them in positions of power within governance. If you can do all of these things and make it so that you can hire a Guatemalan 13 year old at slave labor wages, what's it to you? It's going to cost you nothing. Because the regulatory body is not going to do shit. Nobody's going to investigate because the FDA has only got fucking 14 investigators and they're spread across the entire state and they'll call ahead because that's policy because the guy in head of, uh, as the head of the agency is a, former, uh, is a former corporate lawyer for your company, right? Like, so if you engage in enough of these practices, then you can get what's referred to as regulatory capture going. Right. So this is what the Republicans mean when they say we need to deregulate business. It will make money. It will not for you, though. It will never make you money. What it will do is help buy a second yacht for some douchebag billionaire already. Mm -hmm. That's who's going to benefit from that deregulation. Yeah. It's going to be the C-suite. So CEO, CFO. That's the C-suite. Um, so that's who's going to benefit. Also, Congress. Because it's not even illegal for them to engage in insider trading. If oh. you find out privileged information about a company and you trade on that stock, knowing that thing, that is illegal. If a congressperson comes across privileged information in the course of their job and they trade on that stock making millions of dollars, that's literally not illegal. They passed a law making it not illegal for them. Hmm. Right? So, again, Democrats are just as guilty as the Republicans in that one. Uh But... I'm less concerned about that one at the moment than I am. But again, this is this is the sort of things that you see espoused by the Republicans all the time is that we need we need to de- we need to deregulate this country. We need to get people back to work. Who who are you going to get back to work and how you're going to get them back to work in facilities that have no protections, no worker protections, no means of. Did you did you know? What the uh, what the largest form of theft 
in this country is? Um, I feel like, um, I think I know what you're talking about, but not like the whole story and the details with one of the presidents, no? No, no, no. Just, just there are, there's sort of like, you know, you have like property theft and that sort of thing. Like, you know, people stealing from houses. Do you know what the largest form of theft for the grand total amount of value is in this country? Hmm. What is it? What is it? Wage theft. Employers not paying their employees. The Republicans would have you believe it's cars being stolen by Mexicans coming across the southern border. Uh, but in fact, the largest form of theft in this country is perpetrated on employees by their employers. Yes, yeah, definitely not the first thing I would think of, not the second, third, or anywhere close. Yeah. So, again deregulate right because who would enforce that labor boards would enforce that right well we those labor boards are constantly getting in the way of big business they're getting in the way of corporations right yeah well let's get rid of them now who do you turn to when your employer doesn't pay you you got a lawyer up you got money for a lawyer mcdonald's worker yeah right like they're they're stacking the deck against you everywhere that you can look and so like i said one guy's picking your pocket one guy's threatening you with a knife i'm gonna deal with the guy with the knife first and that's what this election is about it's about dealing with the guy with the knife Mm -hmm. because you look at various policies, Project 2025, et cetera. I'm not going to get into them, but basically the Republicans have a plan. They have a plan. And if they get in using Trump, because Trump, Trump is a dumb fuck, man. Trump, (laughs) Trump is a joke. He's been a joke since the 80s. You can go back to the 90s and, and hear routines by George Carlin literally cracking jokes about him. Donald Trump has been a cultural joke for four decades. And only through rebranding in the recent era has he somehow been taken seriously. He's not a big thinker. This is a guy who bankrupted a casino. You're young, you're probably not familiar with the gaming industry in that way, but bankrupting a casino is one of the all-time difficult things to do. I definitely imagine, yeah. yeah it's, 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 it, it is an accomplishment unto itself. Yes his, yes, his father had to walk money in it, it, to the casino, convert it to chips and lose it at a poker table so the casino wouldn't end up insolvent one day. And it did in in the end anyway. He was constantly, somewhere the estimate is is Fred Trump, his father, bailed him out to the tune of something like $440 million over his life. So he's not some genius businessman. He's bankrupted so many companies. He's been mm-hmm. sued so many times. He's, he is a failure in so many regards. He, he's not a big thinker. So he's taken advantage of pretty easily. And you can look around him and find the players. You can find the people looking to make moves utilizing Trump. Not the first time this has happened in the modern era of the presidency. Mm -hmm. And it's those people that freak people like me the fuck out. Because Trump will absolutely go along with anybody who appeases his narcissistic ego. If you suck up to Trump, he's cool with you. It's that simple. That's that's all Trump is about is Trump. Right? So 
most of the people around him know that he's surrounded by this level of grifters and sycophantic yes men and people who are looking to make moves, right? But mm. the people looking to make those moves are some of the most heinous people in our society. Yeah. And so, like, um, somebody help a brother out. Who's the uh, who's the philosopher that uh, Teal? Uh, has um, you'll know from the story. Somebody give me a name. Um, so J.D. Vance, Trump's vice presidential pick, right? He uh, uh, he tries to bill himself as this like working class hero, right? Fucking he went to he went to Yale, and one of his first stops after Yale was Silicon Valley. He worked for Peter Thiel. He he's he literally just started immediately hanging out with tech bro billionaires. Now he. Uh, Vance, Teal, and the philosopher of the group, who is what, just a friend of Teal's and works in these circles, um, suggested Yarvin, thank you, Red, Curtis Yarvin. He's very famous for noting that he, um, <clears throat> he feels, and Teal and Vance agreed with this, by the way, they very tight group, the three of them, um, that the unproductive of our society could be utilized by converting them into fuel. Wait, converting like? Killing them and using them for biofuel. Hmm. This is who J.D. Vance is hanging out with. Yes. Okay. Right, like, that's who J.D. Vance is hanging out with is the guy who says, let's kill the unproductive and use them as fuel, and the billionaire who, who pays that guy to think that way. I see. So, you know, maybe, maybe, like, you know, look, again, anarchist, not a fan of Kamala. She's a cop. She's a douchebag prosecutor who ignored the wishes and wills of the people and the court system to a certain degree, threw people into a predatory prison system uh, where they, they're utilized as forced labor for fucking minor drug infractions and shit, right? Fuck that bitch. But, but, she's not saying, she's not hanging out with the dude who says, let's convert the poor people to fuel. Yeah. Right? Like, this is very much a harm reduction judgment. Also, her, her VP pick is uh, uh, apparently Big, o, uh, uh, Big Obama Mama or some shit um, said hi. Um, so uh, her VP pick is actually a kind of, like, I'm not going to call him based, but, like, he's he's... He's a human being. <laughs> He's not out there suggesting that we fucking like convert people to fuel. He's, yeah. a, he's a high school football coach, a history teacher. He stood up for fucking the gay kids in his school, right? Anytime they got bullied, he stood up for them. Like a bunch of his former students have come out and said like, hey, you know, he knew we were gay. And anytime that anybody gave a shit, like the football coach was on our side. Right. Like, okay. Yeah. Like I can, you know, he's been on the picket line with workers. He's been mm -hmm. out there. He's been a union member. He's been, a, he's been on the picket line and been like, yeah, you know what? Fuck the company. Like it's about the workers. Okay. Yeah. I can get behind this guy. Right. Also he'll crack a joke about Vance fucking a couch. So, you know, <laughs> Hey, I'll take that too. Right. Some, yeah. somebody who's willing to throw an elbow or two. I'll take mm -hmm. that. Right. I would prefer none of this exist. In an idealized situation, none of this would have to exist. We'd organize mm -hmm. this better, but we don't yeah. have that privilege. We don't have that grace. We have mm -hmm. to deal with it with reality as it's presented to us. And so mm -hmm. right now, I have a narcissistic billionaire who managed to bankrupt a fucking casino and a nut job uh, vice president who went to Yale and immediately started hanging out with tech billionaire bros who think people to, should be turned into fuel if they deem them not productive enough, mm -hmm. right? Versus somebody who at least in some way believes in the rule of law, as fucked up as that bullshit is, mm -hmm. um, law, 
Um, and a high school football coach who stood up for fucking gay kids. Mm. Two of these people are at least in some way human beings. Right. Yeah. Wait, law? What are you, a fucking liberal? Right, Jesus what? Christ! What? Law! Um, law! I knew that was coming. Um, Who is that? How did I hear that? It, because it gets piped through everything. Um, nice. So, yeah. Like, so, yeah, it, it's, it's like, okay, so will Trump be good for the economy? Well, it depends. Do you happen to own property on three continents, have two yachts, and have a vested interest in multi-billion dollar businesses? If the answer is, Maybe. if the answer is yes, yeah, Trump's your guy. Like, for sure, Trump's your guy. If the answer is yeah. no then holy shit you've been lied to um <laughs> he's not your guy he hates poor people he hates poor people mm -hmm. uh, like he's disgusted by poor people um yeah. so like you know yeah it's, it's, yeah fuck it. it just all goes back to what you said like about the knife and the wallet uh yeah like it, it's it is very much a sort of just cold political calculus that I'm engaging in in this situation. And it's just like, look, yeah. it's basic math. One of these groups is associated with a political set of ideologies that see me just as a person, as the literal incarnation of the devil and want me dead. And then they're also associated with a group of people who want to own literally everything. Just everything. The Nestle CEO wants to own water for fuck's sake. You know, like they want to literally own everything. That's one side of this. The other side is we want to profit from everything. <laughs> and we're happy to stand by if you don't force us to do something. Okay. All right. Yes. The In the words of MLK, the white moderate is is the problem, right? It's not the clan member. It's the douchebag willing to stand there while the clan member lynches somebody, <laughs> you know? Okay. But again, the rope is around somebody's neck. How about we deal with the rope? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll yell at the white moderate here. As soon as I'm done dealing with the kicking the clan member <laughs> yeah. in the fucking nuts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Like there, there is a priority to this. And there's a reason that Martin, uh, there's a reason that M uh, Martin had Malcolm, right? You need somebody like Malcolm X to back up Martin Luther King's, you know, like, oh, you know, I get along. Yeah, and if we don't get along, <clears throat> there are there are ramifications, right? Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it that's sort of what it comes down to. And this shit's real. Like... I understand, like, your your prefrontal cortex, I'm going to be real with you, your prefrontal cortex is not even close to being done developing yet. That shit firms up when you're around 25. Hmm. So, like, I know you you think, Marcus, yeah, that's exactly, I know you think that, like, you're a fully formed person. Mm -hmm. That's why we were calling you a fetus, like, early on. Uh, I got caught a fetus? Yeah, yeah, because you are. In this community, by default, you're a fetus. Uh, that's honestly true. That's honestly true. Yeah, you're not a person yet, as far as we're concerned. Like, it's, I get what you're saying, yeah. Yeah, your brain isn't done developing yet, and the prefrontal cortex mm -hmm. is re responsible for ex that higher executive function of future planning. Mm -hmm. So at your age, that sort of forward projection of planning is a very difficult thing. Which is, mm -hmm. as a society, we're completely fucked. Well, fuck it. We tell a 16-year-old, hey, plan the rest of your life. And it's like, how? I can't. Like, my brain yeah. literally cannot do that yet. Mm -hmm. So, like, I get it from a, you know, an empathetic position. But from a scientific position, you're not in a position yet to really project forward in that utilizing an empathetic response because you, one – physiologically are not truly capable of doing it yet and two mm -hmm. you don't have enough life experience yet you're fucking yeah. 19 you're you, you mm -hmm. haven't done shit you barely you barely figured out how your own balls work at this point <laughs> so when you hit 25 and that shit starts to firm up and then when you hit 30 when you've 
loved and lost and had friends die and shit's gotten weird on you and you felt a decade worth of just oppressive capitalism on you on your on the back of your neck right when when that time rolls around that's usually when people like in this community are ready to have a real conversation with you and be like because then you you will be able to relate Mm -hmm. you'll have that empathetic response Mm mm-hmm and the reason I use empathy and not sympathy, there is a difference. Do you know the difference? Mm, no. Sympathy is I can imagine it. Empathy is I can feel it and know it because I've been there. Mm. Right? Yeah. You can, you can sympathize with a poor person on the subcontinent of India who has like literally no, even, no clean water. You're like, yeah, that must suck. Like I can, I can sort of imagine that. That's got to be just fucked up. You can't empathize with that. You've never been there. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's, that's where it comes from. It's like, okay, so how many rape victims have you known in your life? Mm -hmm. How many queer kids who got beat the fuck up by some homophobes or transphobes? How many times in your life have you had to go through that? Right. How many, Mm -hmm. how many friends have you had to pick up? from their parent, from their, like their outside their mother's house and have them just weep openly on your shoulder because their mother told them that the, the global white homo agenda infected them with their ideology and they're not welcome in this house anymore and that they're dead to them. Mm. Right. Like how many times if like, you know, that sort of thing it's like how, how many, how many friends have you had that got kicked out of it, that couldn't make rent and ended up homeless on the streets? How many people have died with drug addictions around you? There's, you're just new still. Yeah. But the further you go, the more life experience you get, the more you put yourself out there, the more that what you find is <laughs> Jay, chat, stop raising your hands. Um, the, the more you'll find that if, if you don't fall into some of these traps and they, they do exist and I see them and they scare the fucking dick off of me, man, shit like Andrew Tate and Joe Rogan and fucking Jordan Peterson, these motherfuckers are selling a bill of goods designed to take advantage of young alienated men. And that is, that is historically the group you target. That's who you go after when you want to start some shit. Mm-hmm. If you want to, if you want to do some Nazi shit, like for real, you go after those young men. Why do you think the military targets young men? It's, it's the group, man. You're, you're 19. You're mm-hmm. fresh in it. You've still got that shit pumped in your head, like the hormones and the fucking, re- think back to like 17 and like, right. That shit's just flowing in your head and you're just angry for no reason one day. And you just, you're just like, I need, like, I need an outlet for some of this. Right. Mm-hmm. What if I convinced you there was an enemy and put a fucking assault rifle in your head and said, go, let's do this give you a camaraderie brotherhood got you give you a reason to fight give you a yeah. guy next to you that shit's that shit that is a scary thought it's dangerous man mm. and the likes of jordan peterson the likes of andrew tate the likes of joe rogan all of those libertarian fuckheads fucking ben shapiro fucking all those douchebags are tapping into that impulse and in it, it, furthering that sort of toxically masculine impulse Mm -hmm. that everybody fucking has. Every dude has that shit. Every guy remembers being in just a fucking pent up teenager. Yeah. And just looking for an outlet. And Mm -hmm. somebody comes along and says, look, look at all this. Look, look at how women, et cetera. Look at how the queers look, how they don't talk about you. Right. Yeah. But who did that? It was, it was the men who did that. It was, it was men who constructed that system. It was men who implemented that system. It was men who allowed that system to be perpetrated. It's men who sent young men to die in bullshit wars. 
Mm. It wasn't a cabal of queer women sitting in the Pentagon who said, let's invade Iraq and Afghanistan because a bunch of Saudis flew a plane into one of our buildings. Right? And so it, they take advantage of that impulse and they give it a direction and then they make money off of it because that's at the end of the day what that's about. Andrew Tate's like, hey, join my Discord. It only costs you $50 a month, right? Fucking mm-hmm. sign up for my membership, subscribe to my channel, give me money, give me attention, which is an economy unto itself, right? Mm-hmm. F- further this goal. And so they're grifters. And I see a lot of guys your age fall into that trap be- mm-hmm. because the algorithm feeds you that shit. That's why we asked where you were getting your, your news. Yeah. Be- what is, because it's all, all algorithmically fed. We've done experiments on this channel with, um, with a very specific browser set wiped with clean IPs and that sort of thing, just literally brand new to YouTube and brand new to algorithmic, uh, uh, algorithmically de- uh, delivered media. And we see how long it takes before we're getting literal Nazi content. And it doesn't take long. It doesn't take long at all. You watch one, one Jordan Peterson video, and the next thing you know, three clicks later, you're getting white nationalists, they shouldn't be here, we need separate nations content. Because mm. that's how the algorithm works. Mm. But you're going to have to spend the next few years of your life trying to figure that out for yourself. Yeah. Being aware of that. Mm. We call it an intellectual immune system around these parts that's a good one you you have to be able to like sit back and go okay wait is there a profit incentive here is there like what's going on am i being taken advantage of Hmm. like why does this guy want me to hate women (laughs) what's in it what's in it for me to hate women no absolutely i do you know there's a lot of stuff on um like tiktok especially that i just look at and I just kind of just ignore it because, you know, I don't know the facts of anything. I don't know who's telling the truth, who's lying. So that's how, you know, that's why I said I just, like, don't really know much about politics. I don't pay attention to really anything. Corrupt, corrupted. It actually goes over and under that. And as you said, as you would note, if you were paying attention, I said around because brain development is complicated but it's a good general marker for understanding when somebody's development is actually not 16 or 18 it takes a while Mm -hmm. and so for the purposes of conversation for the purposes of rhetoric and engagement it makes Mm -hmm. an easy temporal marker to work with but you'll notice i said around because it's Mm -hmm. more complicated than that corrupted but hey welcome to the conversation um, so yeah, it, 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 things like, things like politics, politics is everything and everything is politics. And that, that sort of is the long version of why, yeah, some people get worked up about, about some of this shit because uh. frankly, It's kind of fucked up when you start actually paying attention to it and you're like, oh shit, I'm cracking jokes about farmers committing suicides and 13 year olds getting raped by their dads and being forced Mm. to have their like rape babies and shit. It's like, yeah, Yeah. I think you can joke about anything. I'm not one of those people, but the joke has to be funnier than the material is fucked up. Right? Like that's, Mm. that's the rule of a joke. The joke has to be funnier than the thing is fucked up. Yes, absolutely. Otherwise, you're just saying some fucked up shit. (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. You know, when I may have pressed enter, I don't think I really saw that one through, but... Yeah, and so, like, again, I... Dude, I've I've helped write an amazing rape joke. I've helped, like, I've... Trust me, I think you can joke about all this stuff, but, yeah, just... Mm -hmm. Just being one of those like MAGA blah people, it's just it's like man, either either up your troll game, 
which again, mm -hmm. we've got some amazing trolls in community as well <laughs> that, that will absolutely help you hone your troll game, right? Like either up your troll game or understand the context and be like, hey, you know what? Maybe it's kind of fucked up. Yeah. Uh, well, man, um, I got to wake up early tomorrow. It's getting late. I don't know what time it is for you, but it's 1 a.m. for me. Uh, an opportunity like this is actually like really insightful useful and i really appreciate your time honestly because this is giving me like a whole view of things and genuinely i do mean that good and you're welcome and come back by and ask questions in discord and we've got a lot of people that have a lot of knowledge and a lot of life experience absolutely absolutely all right man take care of yourself all right you as well you as man